Hello everyone. Welcome to one number four, the wand of humiliation. This is a series of programs that I'm doing based on a book called The Five Wounds That, that Don't Allow to Be Yourself. And the author is Liz Bourbeau. And if you haven't seen the others, I recommend you to do so. I already spoke about abandonment, rejection, and betrayal. And today we will be talking about humiliation. And before I begin, uh, you might ask that why it's important for me to know this. Because we all have these wounds that we need to recognize. Otherwise, those emotional emptinesses we are going to be looking in other people to fulfill and we feel we felt this in our childhood and it's more related to our parents and these ones when we don't recognize them we tend to attract experiences to live the same sort of uh, ones like if if i'm trying to reject abandonment maybe i will attract someone to abandon me so we need to recognize this. That's why I'm sharing this information for you to have some self acknowledgement or to have some observations of which of these wounds could be stronger within you and you haven't been able to see it. So let's talk today about the wound of humiliation. Humiliation, I went to the dictionary and it says that it is Humiliate is to make someone feel ashamed and foolish by injuring their de dignity and self-respect, especially in front of others. So this wound happens between the age of one and three years old, and it probably happens when the child feels that one or his or her parents feel ashamed of him because they did something inappropriate or wrong. I'm going to give some examples here. Let's say, and what they did wrong before I go to the examples is that the parents see that inappropriate. Not necessarily it is, but the parents see it like that because usually our parents are coming to heal the same one and maybe they weren't able to recognize that but now that you are listening to this information you might say oh maybe that's why i went through these experiences and maybe i can change that for maybe your descendants and not to do it the same and so that's my intention with this as well so let's put an example of how a, a child could have felt um these wounds let's say that and i've seen this many times <laughs> that maybe the mother tells the daughter or her son that you are too fat stop eating and maybe they do say it in a criticizing way and maybe they say it in front of others so this child is going to feel hurt. Maybe they dressed in a way that mom doesn't agree or doesn't feel appropriate and they, they just kind of judge. That's not appropriate. And maybe they say it in front of others. So they kind of have those injuries as I defined at the beginning. They, they injure their dignity because they are just learning. And also, let's say that, and this is something that, I, that I, I once watched the movie about this. It was very interesting. There was this kid that was, um, had issues with learning not to pee on the bed at night. And, and the parents would take the sheets out and put them outside for other kids to see that they didn't want to, they couldn't hold it. And so that's a sort of creating that shame on them and that's creating that wound. When the kids, another example is when the kids are learning about their bodies and, 
um, yeah, pee and poop, for example, they, they touch it and maybe they play with it and maybe they mess up with it. And maybe the parents come and tell them that that's nasty. That's nasty, that's gross, that is disgusting. Ew. And all of these words make this child feel like I should be shame of myself because I'm, I'm not okay. That's not natural. And what is natural becomes a shame. And that's going to create eventually more issues in these children as adults. They might, they might have problems, especially with uh, their sexuality. And I'm going to talk a little bit more when I develop the information, um, when I talk about when they are adults. Another example could be that maybe uh, the kid see any of the parents um, maybe getting naked or without clothes and they hide their bodies. So maybe this kid learns that you should be feel shame of your own body because it's not good to show it. So all of these little situations, experiences can create this in, in a child. And maybe that's the one that that child came to heal because their parents couldn't heal it as well. And we all have one, so, or two. <laughs> so just, we got disconnected, but we are back to be connected again. <laughs> Let's continue. So usually what happens um, here, the one, this one especially happens with the parent that is in charge of raising this kid. If it usually is mom. Mom, um, but this mother tends to be very judgmental and maybe controlling, very controlling and criticize a lot. Because there, there are loving ways to teach kids. But this mother, since she maybe has the same wound, doesn't know how to say it and creates these sort of wounds in, in the kids. That's, that's all unconscious, not that the mother wants to do it, but because it is unconscious and maybe she was taught the same way, maybe that's what she's doing now. So we need to have the compassion to understand that here. We are not judging. We are just um, giving these observations of on how it was that happened and why it happened. And it could be also the father if it, was, if it is the person who is maybe raising the kid, teaching him or her how to dress, how to eat properly, how to do this. And the way they teach it maybe is more of criticizing or controlling, too controlling, and, or don't allow them to be, to express themselves. So this person usually feels a lot of guilt and shame. They feel or they consider that they don't do things right because I, they, have, they have heard most of their life like, you're wrong, that's not the way, you should do it this way. So it's like a sort of, you, you're not okay. And actually, I'm going to recommend you this book. It's called I'm Okay, You're Okay. That uh, can also help you a lot understanding a lot of our psychology. But um, yes, if the kid says, I'm not okay, my mom is okay. And then they feel guilt of not doing things right. And at the same time, they feel shame. Shame because they judge themselves for not doing those things as the others expect or as mother or as mom expect and eventually in life as others expect. These, um, these feelings, um, the way to, for you not to feel guilt or shame, let's put it this way, make you create a mechanism of <clears throat> uh, protection or survival. So the way for others not to hurt me, I'm going to become maybe the good girl or the good boy. And uh, here, 
the thing here is that they put this mask because we all put some mask. If you see the other wounds, every wound has a mask and we all apply to those. And the wound uh, that applies here is called the masochism because somehow you, you are the good girl or the good boy, but that you do it because you don't wanna be on the spot and others can judge, judge or criticize the way you're doing things. So you do extra, extra things, to take extra responsibilities, but anything, but no one to, to avoid, anything to avoid others to judge what I'm doing. And so be, before others even ask, they take all these responsibilities. Oh, I'll do it. Don't worry, I'll take care of that. And so I'll be, become maybe the good girl or the good boy Let's put it this way, but there is a sort of masochism because I don't want to do it, but I'm, I'm doing this to avoid being put on that spot that can make me feel shame and again, feel hurt. They are, they are actually hypersensitive to others who can criticize them. Um, it hurts, if they, they get hurt easily. Maybe they don't say it, but they do feel, um, they do feel it deeply because their wound awakens when someone criticizes them. So that's how they play this sort of dynamic of being the good uh, person. I'm so um, indispensable, for example, they feel like they are indispensable because they take all of these responsibilities and they tend to be taking control of things because they don't want to be exactly controlled. And, and that's part of the game that you play unconsciously, of course. We don't notice it. I want, I, want you, I want to say it again, just to make sure you understand that, oh, I, I'm not like that. But it's not that you don't recognize it. You need to recognize that you are playing these dynamics that you don't know. And it is because of these wounds of your childhood. So physically, we all, though everyone has different uh, threats, different features, and the wound of humiliation tend to be the, the heaviest one. They gain weight easily. They tend to be larger. Their torso is kind of short and their necks are kind of uh, wide and their backs, are very uh, broad as well. And because they need a broad back to carry all of these responsibilities that they take, because they don't even are asked, they just take them based on what happened in their childhood. Of course, it's not that they want to, but that's their behavior, unconscious behavior. They also have round face and big eyes. That's kind of some of the main features, uh, traits that these one shows in the body. They also ten have a tendency to move slowly than the other ones. Okay, when or why, let's put it this way, why, um, why this one can happen? Yes, I just mentioned that maybe uh, their parents or maybe the mother has the same one. But also this mother, since in, for them or for the mother who has the same one, the appearance is very important. So they want their kids to look good, clean, neat, and to behave good. They, they don't accept other, other possibilities. And when, and they actually kind of control not only the kids, but also the husband and everything. It's like they want every, they want to look in front of others like this is a very well behaved and appropriate uh, family, let's put it this way. And, and when, when a kid learns that the only way for mom not to criticize me is to behave the way she wants, then the kid does that. Learns to do things as mom tell me to do. 
still mom is a burden, but I will do it that way. So eventually it is hard for them to express their needs because what maybe what they could express could be shame on mom or uh, shame on others and put me on the spot and maybe in front of others and I don't want to go through the same wound. I don't want to feel hurt. So I just don't express my needs. And that that is something that eventually is going to have some other effects. And I, I will talk about that when I get to these kids when they become adults. These parents, since they want to have this um, well-behaved uh, family, they tell their kids maybe not to talk about embarrassing things. And these kids are learning to not to say it because that's, that's a shame, you know? I don't wanna talk about my uncle who is drunk or ended up in jail, for example. That would be terrible for these parents <laughs> if this kid shares that, for example. And so, they um, they just want to make others happy. That's what they learn. I'm gonna let, make others happy, and so I will be fine. And their desires then don't don't matter. I don't care what I want, but as long as I'm not in that spot, I'm gonna make everybody happy. Just not to disgust anybody, especially my mother. Because it all began with mom. And then eventually when you go outside and as an adult, you do it with others as well. Because it became a pattern. And this is a pattern. It became maybe the mother hasn't healed that. So the daughter is doing the same or the son is doing the same. They tend to, um, they want to be useful. They want to um, be helpful. But behind that helpfulness is that masochism. I'm, I'm, gonna to, I'm going to do this so people think I'm a good person. And even though I don't wanna do it because I don't like doing that, but I will take that. And that's kind of the inner mm, mm, behavior that is unconscious that is happening here. And, and also they, but they are kind of funny too. They, they have this sense of humor and, and because they cannot express the way, the way they want. They want to laugh li really loud, but they don't because they have these things. Maybe they, they, are, um, they do this, um, make people, other people laugh, and they actually make fun of themselves, even of their weight, for example. They have these jokes of um, fat people if I'm fat, for example, or if I have other issues, I would make fun of the same issues and, or situations. And that's sort of an unconscious way to humiliate yourself. So it's, it's kind of like showing, confronting your mirror, but you don't see it that way. You think that's just like a joke. Um, it, they also have issues with their um, dignity, but also their value. Like I, they feel they don't, they are not so important. And since they feel like they are just kind of small, they also use those words. They have this in their, in their language. They use a lot of the words, the tiny, small, little thing. And they actually look for spaces that are small. They, even though they're big, they look for small cars or small spaces to live. And it is, it is like showing something there, but that's their tendency. And it is unconscious because it also is related to deserving. I don't deserve. I'm not okay, I don't deserve. And that's important also to take a look um, into that. I'm sharing all of these observations for you to see if they apply or if you have ever felt this way because we all have felt somehow humiliated at any time. But maybe some of us have one or two ones that are stronger. So let's see if this one is yours. They tend to feel guilty if things don't come out well. And they use actually those words 
also a lot. It's, oh, it is my fault. I'm so sorry. I apologize. It is me. It was me. And they tend to take the responsibility actually of others on them, on themselves. And if someone tells you, oh, it is your fault, even though it's not, they convince themselves that it is not to be on the spot and to be humiliated. Just, yes, it is my fault. I'm so sorry. I will do something to fix it. So they take responsibility for things they maybe didn't do just because uh, they don't want to feel like that they won't awaken. So it, it hurts again. It, every time they feel it and it's anyone, you feel it awakens and you don't like it. It's like, oh, it hurts and you don't understand why. And it is because when you were a child, you went through these experiences that gave you these feelings and made these wounds and they are deep in your soul and we need to heal them, of course. That's the idea with this, um, in my intention that I, of sharing this information is for you to acknowledge maybe this information and have a self-observation on which ones could be used again. Okay, um, they love, love freedom. But when they have freedom, they don't know what to do with it. But when they have their freedom, they just eat a lot or spend a lot or buy a lot of things or express themselves the way they want it. It's like when they feel free, they love it. But at the same time, they self-sabotage that freedom because they don't know what to do with it and it goes over limit. And then they, it can cause other effects. So um, they, uh, that self-sabotaging goes to, uh, let's give an example here. Let's say that this man has a wife and, and maybe this wife is kind of like uh, his mother, <laughs> which is probably a, it's a common case, uh, maybe too controlling. So maybe this man mm, doesn't want to be at home with that freedom to be at home because doesn't feel like it's really that freedom. So he goes outside and looks for three different jobs or two jobs to avoid being at home. So it's like they get into more responsibilities to avoid that freedom or to have this other um, mirror because it's just a mirror that he's facing or we are all facing and confronting and we don't want to see them. So ways to avoid that is because we want to avoid seeing what it is within ourselves. Mm, their biggest... Um, sense of doing is that they are very responsible. They love, yeah, they like taking responsibility, extra responsibilities, but they also have a sense of responsibility. They like uh, responding to it. They are right on it. So they are very, um, if you need to hire someone to do certain things, they are sure enough, they, they are good at taking responsibility and fulfilling. They also like to dress um, elegant. They like and a little bit too tight, like the clothes are a little bit too tight, but they, they like looking elegant. They like looking well. Because of course they learn the appearance is important as children, so they like looking good in front of others. <laughs> um, when they are adults, they try to avoid these experiences where they can feel again humiliated or shame. And while we resist, what we resist is what we attract. So maybe this woman uh, has a husband who likes drinking a lot and making shows in front of everybody and maybe that's some, something that she feels shame of and but that's the sort of husband she attracted because she has a wound to heal so it's not him but it's her that's what i'm trying to tell you here or maybe he they go out and maybe he likes flirting with other women and that she kind of feels humiliated. So that the one is speaking, 
the one is always speaking. It's just showing in front of you for you to confront it and say, oh, you are within me. So integrate it. Once we integrate it, we can liberate it. That's very important. Well, they don't like, of course, to be criticized, but they have a tendency to criticize others. They, they have a tendency to say, oh, how dirty that is, or that is grotesque, or that smells bad, or they speak so bad, or their behavior, they bad behavior. They, they criticize maybe what, when they were kids also were taught, so they, they don't like being criticized, but they somehow criticize as well. They also have this thing of not feeling that they deserve. And they don't deserve, for example, ple pleasure. Pleasure is something that they, they deny. They don't, they don't feel like they can be recognized. And this is important to see here because this can uh, cause a lot of issues, especially in their sexuality. They have difficulties feeling comfortable with their sexuality. And the thing here, because of course they feel that sex is a sin, that it is dirty. And just like when mom told them about, you know, when they were getting maybe party trained or they did this with the pee or the poop, and so they feel like those needs is also dirty. And they feel like it is a sin and they don't feel comfortable, but they have a, an other side that they like it. It is the one that likes the most, like they, they really want it. They have a lot of desire, but they don't say it because they weren't, they weren't allowed to express their needs. So they don't say it, but they, they really want it. And that creates, of course, a lot of issues with their partner and their sexuality because of the lack of expression and that sort of thinking that that is dirty or that is a sin or um, a lot of things that were created from, from childhood like sex is a taboo for them pretty much. And um, they don't want to feel like it's embarrassing. Certain things are embarrassing, especially when they are going from childhood to adolescence, for example. They feel like that's embarrassing. And like, for example, women, to avoid being seen, maybe they start like getting bigger or they cover them, like they put like big shirts, for example, so they avoid showing the curves of, or the body so they are they that's the way to avoid others to see them even though they want to be seen to rec to be recognized and also uh, um, be seen desire it's like a double um, face like i don't want them but i do want that you know <laughs> and men also um there are many issues that can happen here especially when the boys start, start, for example, masturbating and maybe the mother finds them and tells them that that is gross or nasty or whatever and not natural, then that also can create more problems with these kids. Eventually, they can have uh, sexual issues with delays or too fast on ejaculation. That's, those are the consequences of those type of things. They are very sensuous and very... Uh, sexual so they they have this sensuality they just um they it's like i call it but i cannot they have that double thing okay i think that's pretty much i'm going to talk a little bit about maybe the illnesses because everyone also develops certain illnesses because our body somatizes what our emotions and uh, for example, since they take a lot of responsibility, maybe they, they suffer from uh, back pain, like the upper part of the shoulders, like the neck, and that's like all of these weights because I put a lot of responsibilities on me, or the low back as well. They both, the, all of these buttons, it's all like 
burden. Also the liver, because the liver is like they worry too much for others, but they also have all of these repressions and also that anger. And maybe that hasn't been able to be released and that can create liver problems. Another issue that they can have could be with their throats because they don't say what they want. It's hard for them to ask for what they want. Also the thyroid because they don't recognize their needs. They don't even recognize their needs and of course they don't express those desires and that can cause them a lot of issues with the thyroid. So every part of the body is just speaking. We, we need to learn how to listen to what it is and what is connected to. It could be connected or related to one of those wounds. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it, all I wanted to share today. And um, I hope you get to um, have, or you had good observations from this one. We all have them anyways. And I invite you to see the other three ones, rejection, abandonment, and betrayal. And next time I will, will be talking about injustice. If you like this uh, information, you can just give it a like here. <laughs> and if you think that maybe someone is having this sort of wounds and haven't been able to see, see it in themselves, maybe you can share this information. I will appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, maybe this is the right moment to click here. <laughs> and I'll see you next time around. I'm, I'm, before I go, I'm going to invite you to, I do, of course, what am, why am I going to all of this? I am a facilitator, I do therapies. And these therapies are called Family and Systemic Constellations. And they actually are a tool or a possibility to transcend those wounds from our past, those repressions, those sadness from our childhood, and also from our ancestors. Because see what they couldn't resolve back then, someone is living today, and it could be you. And we can change that. Yes, we can change. There, is, there are possibilities with the family constellations through an experience to change that. So I wanted to invite you to our online meetings on Tuesdays at 7.30. We do family constellations, uh, group family constellations online. And if you are interested, you can go to my website, mayadaridelsoul.com, and you can click on Journey to the Soul. And every session is only $21, and we sort who is going to be constellated, and I hope to see you there. It will be, I will be very happy if you get to come and experience yourself uh, creating a change so you can release all of these wounds and burdens and past that we have. We have a lot to do. So at least if we do step by step, we can get ourselves free of this and integrate and release and liberate and transcend so we can finally move on towards what we want to accomplish in life. <laughs> These are, are actually the first steps well, that we should do here within the soul, within the mind, within our heart, and then we can move on to move towards our visions and whatever else we want to accomplish related to relationships, finances, and health, and goals, and and more. <laughs> Thank you for listening. I'll see you next time around. Bye. <laughs>